Okay, good evening everyone. My name is uh, Woody Maynard and I'm from Neoconics, uh, which is in Sunnyvale, California. You probably, many of you probably not have heard of us. We're a relatively young company, but we make electrical connectors. So we're going to have to take a step back inside the wearable device and look at some of the challenges there. Uh, Neoconics is also, you know, our parent company is Unimicron Technologies. So that's a company that some of you uh, may be aware of. Uh, but anyway, Neoconics, uh, sort of some of the key uh, features that our, our products offer are we can we can provide very low profile connectors very thin connectors very low very small form factor and we have the capability to customize our connectors very easily to get into some pretty intricate uh, space constraints so that's why we're here at the wearable tech conference and uh, I'll go through this in a little more detail so just to introduce the technology briefly uh, basically, you know, the best way to look at the structure to visualize it is to think of a, you know, a cantilever beam that's emanating from the surface of a, of a small piece of FR4, a mirror image cantilever beam on the bottom, and then a plated through hole that would join the two. Uh, that's how we establish the electrical connection. Uh, and then with the technology, we can replicate that as many times as we need to across the connector, uh, depending on the pin count that's required. Uh, we can change the pitch and the spacing of the connectors, etc and compensate for things like, you know, the current capacity that's required, et cetera. So some of the applications that these are used for are display uh, connections for flex to board, uh, battery connectors, uh, jumpers, and things like that. So, you know, the basic structure of the contact element is as I, uh, as I just described. Uh, when we manufacture, so the question becomes, how do we manufacture it? We actually do this in batch format and panel format, much like you manufacture a printed circuit board. So we're using processes like photolography and etch. So if you think about uh, the individual contact element that I just described, uh, you can replicate that across the connector, but then you can also replicate that across a very large panel. So we manufacture this with you know, photolithography and etch, lamination, drilling, routing, much like a printed circuit board. And then in these big panels, we dice them up into the individual uh, components, depending on the size that's required. So, the way that we manufacture this product, there's no molds. So we have a lot more design flexibility than most traditional connectors have. And it also gives us an opportunity to make them very thin uh, and to address some pretty unique uh, space constraints. So let me speak about some of the key features. Uh, one that I think is very applicable to, to wearable technologies is uh, thinness. So we can manufacture uh, connectors that are ext extremely thin, in fact, paper thin. You can see in the example here, the connector is actually thinner than the business card that's sitting next to it. So when you do have uh, you know, very tight space constraints, this is an option uh, that you may have at your disposal. In addition to attaching these uh, contact elements onto a rigid substrate like FR4, we can also uh, apply it on any circuitizable substrate like polyimid. So the other uh, picture on the bottom shows the, the contact embedded basically on a polyimid substrate so you can get the flexibility of that connector as well. Again, you have very low thickness. And since, you know, the inherent, the basic part of the technology is how it's applied to that substrate, the thickness of what's in between it is, is really uh, irrelevant for, to our processing for the most part. So we can basically address uh, any specific thickness requirement that you may have. So saving space in the z-axis is obviously very important. Things are getting thinner and thinner. Uh, saving space on the board is also very important. So uh, we have a way that we can do that by changing the configuration of traditional connectors from the traditional one row or two row configuration to an area array configuration. So what you're looking at here is a, a traditional ZIF connector, which is a zero insertion force connector uh, at 0.5 millimeter pitch, 80 positions. Uh, a Neoconics area array connector is shown directly underneath it. And you can see it's about a third of the size. So that saves space on the board, but in addition to that, it also allows you to have a narrower flex. So you save the space that's going to be utilized by the flex. Also, in most cases, the flex circuit itself will be less expensive uh, because it is smaller and it's a, it's a panelized technology. So there's a couple different advantages that come with that. Uh, so we talked about making the, the connectors thinner, making them smaller. Uh, for space constrained uh, applications. There's also a lot of other customization that you can do with a photolithography based technology that you can't do with a molded technology. For example, uh, in the lower right hand corner you'll see we can actually circuitize these connectors so they can have a different pattern on the top than they have on the bottom. 
uh, so you can have space transformation. Uh, also, because we're using printed circuit board processing techniques, we have a tremendous amount of flexibility in what the outline of the part looks like, what the size of the tooling holes are, the alignment holes, any other features or keep outs that we need to incorporate. Basically, anything that you can uh, process on a printed circuit board, to a large extent, we can apply those same uh, principles to printed circuit board to our connector technologies. Uh, and what that also means is that we can iterate designs very quickly. We can do a full custom design, oftentimes in the order of a few weeks. In some expedited circumstances, we've actually done fully, con fully customized connectors in a matter of three days. Uh, as opposed to traditional molded connectors where you have the, you know, the, the infrastructure to build the, the tooling for the molds, uh, which is not only expensive on the front end, but it also uh, takes quite a bit of time. So those are some of the key features. So, so how do these go together? Uh, the most common approach is a screw down assembly. So this is a normal force connector, so it's a cantilever beam that needs to be compressed to engage. So this is one example, and we have many variants of this that we've used for a lot of portable electronic devices like laptop computers, mobile electronics, medical electronics, portable uh, uh, projectors, uh, gaming devices, etc. So in this case, to align the connector system, uh, we have two dowel pins, which are uh, surface mount attached to the top of the printed circuit board. At the same time, the other SMT components are assembled. Uh, on the bottom side, there is a, a nut that's also SMT attached, which the screw will fasten into. Uh, in some cases, customers just uh, use a threaded boss in their case to secure, to secure the connector system. And then for, for the assembly of the flex, basically the interposer and the, and the flex circuit slip over those alignment pins, which gives it the, the alignment it needs, and then the screw is inserted and turned to, uh, to fasten the connector system. And you end up with something that's, that's very low profile, and mechanically it's very robust. So it's a screw uh, positive retention system. So uh, when, it, when uh, the product's exposed to shock and vibration and drop tests, these products perform extremely well. So Neoconics is in a lot of high reliability server applications, medical electronics, military electronics, where, where reliability is actually extremely important and it's been uh, very thoroughly tested. So I, I mentioned a couple example applications, uh, just a, a couple things to highlight with battery connectors, which you know all portable devices have a battery. Uh, Neoconics, because we can uh, accommodate such a, a high density, we can often, uh, in, in a battery connector situation, we can offer a lot of redundancy. So instead of having one power signal or one power contact and one ground contact, we might be able to have eight neoconics contacts in that same position. So you have the redundancy of having eight power contacts. And then with all the uh, connections in, in parallel, the resistance is also much, much less. So you can have a much more, much more efficiency in your connection system. And at the same time, you get all the other advantages in terms of uh, customizing the size and the space uh, that you have. Uh, I, one of the new recent developments we've had is that we've actually uh, figured out a way to embed this connector technology directly onto a flex circuit. So what you're seeing here, this is a, a pretty uh, unique innovation. The connector system is actually integral to the flex itself. So that's basically the, you know, the ultimate in the connection system because now you don't even have a loose connector. It's essentially taking the connector out of the equation and you can screw the, the flex assembly itself directly down onto the board and get an extremely low, low profile. So uh, you know, just to summarize, uh, in terms of wearable electronic products, I think uh, the technology that we have for connectors can provide some merit and uh, this could be something to add to your toolkit in designing new products. Neoconics can offer product, connector products that are extremely thin, very low profile, accommodate a lot of the special space constraints you have with some of these unique devices, unique form factor devices. And at the same time, we can provide excellent reliability uh, so that we can help enable uh, your, new, your, your new next generation products. Is there any questions? Got about 30 seconds back in the corner. It's, it's intended for internal uh, connections. That's what it was designed for. Gold to gold interfaces specifically. Uh, if there's no, uh, so one thing I didn't mention is traditionally there's a, a spring contact on both sides. We can also have a surface mount option so it can be soldered. 
to one connection, but then it's a gold to gold interface on the other. I think that's it for my time. We're in the back. If you have any more questions, please, please feel free to come by. Thank you.